All right, let's start the episode with, ooh, fashion. Turn to the left, fashion. Turn to the right, fashion. Shantae, the inauguration fashions. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where do we begin? Do we begin with our forever first lady, Queen Michelle Obama? Do we begin there? Is that where we start? Is it? I mean, of course we do. I mean, America got an enema yesterday. Let's just say that. Like, the water is clear, y'all. <laughs> like, Yesterday was um, just a sigh of relief. And you know, like, like the bottom, like the water is clear. There's a sigh of relief. We ready. We are ready to move forward. It was a poltergeist moment. Tangina walked out and said, this house is clean. <laughs> I was just happy. But just before we get to the fashion, I just want to say that it was, it was just nice. And then I saw the press conference yesterday. It was actual like fact. It was like an actual press conference. She didn't like insult anyone's intelligence. She didn't say any lies. Like she actually was saying what was going on. The president is working. Like it's, it's new territory. I feel like I just got out of jail. It really does. So yes, um, the inauguration, I'm just glad nothing bad happened. It was just like a smooth event, but it wasn't smooth in D.C. because D.C. was practically on lockdown. Like, you could not leave to go anywhere. Like, the whole D.C. was shut down for that event. So shout out to the people in D.C. who went through that yesterday. But the fashions, yes. First and foremost, Michelle Obama. Just, oh, like, where to begin? Like, the hair, like, laid was trending on Twitter. Mm. <laughs> Edges, look at those healthy edges. Now that isn't a child, that edge was coming all the way down. Now you see now my edge is all the way back up here. She had better edges than me. Her edges were all the way down because she ain't balding. I'm balding, but it's fine. You know, I'm old. Um, but her edge all the way down, all the way down, just a healthy edge. The curls, I have never seen a curl bounce and behave like that. It gave a little, each curl was like, huh just shrugging off that last administration, just, mm, mm, oh, who do you think you are? Especially if you compare her um, inauguration look from 2000, um, 2017. Yeah, it was. Yeah, 2017, like she, she didn't care. And like the looks on her face, but this was just like, I'm ready. I have arrived <laughs> and the spotlight is on me. Even Jill Biden look good. Oh, wait, hold on. We got to get to... I know, I know. We got to get the full look. I know. Oh, God. The, uh, like, what, what do we call this color? Because we're going to put some pictures up for this one. So what do we call this color? Is She's it... Is it I, I, I would say maroon is just too regular, regular, schmegular. This is true ox blood. It was royal. Like Ooh. a royal cranberry. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I love that royal cranberry. That's what it is. That's what it is. Royal cranberry. I mean, and that bell. Oh my God. I mean, first the coat, like that was, I mean, those, the sheep had act right. The sheep that that wool was sheared from had act right. Those were the best sheep on the farm. Mm -hmm. You see, now I'm not a big fan of culottes, but this was a culotte moment. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And then of course, a ribbed turtleneck and the, the, the colors, oh my God. Oh my God, the rich, the dye, and then the belt. Now, when everybody saw the belt, they thought like, oh, is that the Gucci? Mm -mm, mm -mm. She's Michelle Obama. She wears haute couture. She doesn't do a Gucci belt. Not with the jeans, not with a logo. Oh. Right? Not a logo. A logo. And I'll tell you, I saw that, honey. That was the finest crocodile. And when it died, it had a smile. Mm. It was a lot of monochromatic looks. And I didn't mind it, you know? Um, it was just so luxe. And just, just when she, I, I gasped. Like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. It was a very Dominique Devereaux outfit it was very custom um i do i want to know what the material 
the metal was of that belt because I'm like, I think that might have been actual gold, like a 14 carat. Mm -hmm. Because that it, it was shining. I mean, shining. Not like brass. It wasn't brassy. It wasn't cheap. I mean, it did. Oh, Lord. It was a black designer. I want to know about that belt. Was that belt specifically commissioned for her? Because that belt was, oh, ooh, she knew how to do a centerpiece and then just waste, 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 waste. No waste. Rob Dixon could learn about femininity from her. That outfit was probably like worth like Robin Dixon's house, apartment. <laughs> life. Jeez. I bet you she could die and her life insurance wouldn't cover that outfit. Hey, I'm, it is what it is. I mean, with the, here's the thing. First, she got to pay off 90,000 to the IRS. So already her $100,000 policy has gone down to 10,000. And 10,000 won't cover that belt. Just shout out to Michelle Obama. I, I just, just always coming through with the fashion tip. <laughs> that was just opulence. Mm, 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 mm. And now let's go to Jill because Jill gave us Alexis Morell Carrington Colby Dexter. Well, I, this color was really beautiful. Um, she, the waist was cinched. And I was like, this is a white woman. She must be non-problematic because she looks good. The shoe, the shoe was N-A-S-T-Y. The shoe was nasty. The shoe was just giving everything it needed to give. I mean, the 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 coat, the the matching mask, the um the necklace uh, uh decoration around the collar. It was awesome, and also you could tell she was like, "I ain't gonna be out here freezing." Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, it 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 all came together. I was really surprised, you know, like. I, I guess I'm just not familiar with Jill Biden. I don't really see her. I'm sorry, Dr. Jill Biden. <laughs> but she looks great. I loved it. I, I, I just love blue, you know? So it was a win for me. Really? You love blue? No kidding. I wonder <laughs> who else loves blue. I wonder <laughs> who. I don't know. So next up, we have um, Kamala Harris. I'm sorry, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. That just sounds so good. So good. Ooh, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and President of the Senate Kamala Harris. <laughs> she is also President of the Senate. Second in command of the United States. <laughs> Thank God. Oh. It is such a just, it's just, ooh, the relief. And Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Minority Leader. No, I'm just saying, like, the title is no more, you know, it's gone. I don't want to think about Yertle the Turtle today. <laughs> So it's a good day. We ain't got to think about Yertle the turtle or Yordis the tortoise. Okay. So I loved um, what she was wearing, but I love the color on her. And, you know, she shut people up by wearing a dress. She didn't have to. She could have went the pantsuit route, but she chose to um, do a dress. I would have thought she looked great regardless. The hair was laid. And I loved just seeing like, when her hand was on that Bible, like she just looks so fresh. Like her face just looks so beautiful. And that hand was moisturized. I'm not sure if anyone else noticed that. Like it was a moisturized hand. Like she knew, she knew. She exuded happiness. She exuded the happiness of the ancestors that heal again, heal, heal, heal. No kidding. No kidding, she came through with a nasty four inch pump. I mean, she walked up them stairs like, mm, yeah. I get a nasty four inch pump, black as it wanted to be, just mm -hmm. like her. Um, also, she wore um, Shirley Chisholm's pearls. Shirley Chisholm's granddaughter gave her 
uh, her pearls to wear for the inauguration. I did not know that. That is that is beautiful. Yeah, and uh, actually, a lot of Senate, um, a lot of female senators wore pearls in solidarity for that, and so that was that was also like a beautiful part of her outfit. Where Joy Reid talked about, you can use fashion to make a statement, and she also was in all black designers, one from South Carolina and one from New York. Yeah. At first, I thought the pearls honestly was from the AKAs or something. That's what I thought, but I, I didn't hear about the Shirley Chisholm, so that's nice. Well, now that we've talked about the important people, let's get to the unimportant, Jennifer Lopez. I love what she was wearing. Like, let's start with that. That was Chanel. She was wearing all white. It, I thought she looked gorgeous. That's one thing J Lo, like, not gonna do. Like, we're not talking about her performance yet. We're just talking about what she was wearing. What she was wearing, I thought she looked great. Her wig to me was something that she stole from Mariah Carey's dressing room during her butterfly rainbow era. I'm just being honest. Like, wait till I get to her performance. That's something else. But I, I'll well, give her. Here's the thing we can't get to her performance because she did not perform. Now, I stopped reviewing Drag Race, but I know you're still interested in it. That was a lip sync for your life. You think? Are you kidding me? I mean, the woman is always off key on the record, but she clearly had a Shanti pre-record her track and then got up there and mouthed, just mouthed. So I here's the call it a sing along. It was a mouthing. No notes were coming out of her mouth. She was quieter than Janet Jackson. So here's the thing. Like, let's rewind. First, when I heard Jennifer Lopez was gonna be there, I was like, doing what? <laughs> because this is a time where they like, we get vocalists for performances like this. Like if she was doing like, you know you know, doing that, you know, I'm fine, but we're not having a dance performance at the inauguration, you know? So I was like, what is she gonna be doing? She's gonna be singing? And I'm not sure, but I don't like this push that she's getting to be a vocalist, like, stop it. Like, who's encouraging this? That's what I wanna know. This push to be a vocalist. Right, because it happened before, like at the New Year's Eve thing, where she was like trying to actually like sing. I was like, no, no. Stay in your lane. Like you're a mediocre singer, a mediocre actress, but you're like a brilliant dancer and performer. She could perform. I saw her in Vegas and she really, like it was worth all of the coin that I spent on it. But vocalist, no, please. So we get to it and what she sung, I was like, soon as she hit like, well, the first 15 seconds, I was like, they literally could have got any vocalist in the United States. Like, was Christina Aguilera busy? Was Ariana Grande busy? Was JoJo busy? Like, I would have got Jessie J and she's not even like, you know, a citizen. But I think people were saying, oh, because she's Latina, like, can we do this? I'm like, I'm sure there are other Latinas that can sing. Like, I would have got Shakira before her. I know Shakira got some citizenship because I know she in trouble or something with, with the law, with taxes and shit, but that was the first thing. Now, second, the level of difficulty, that's why I said that it, wasn't a, it wouldn't have been far-fetched of me to think that she lip synced because that was not difficult at all. That's why I was just like, they really could have got someone who would have really shined. But I was just like, this was an American Idol audition. Star and, search. Yes, and then lastly, Lastly, how tacky. Let's get loud? Are you for real? Like, I, I literally, like, my mouth dropped when she put let's get loud. She threw that in. She literally threw that in. I was like, are you serious right now? I was outdone. The nerve. The nerve. You, you, you literally enter in a song of yours into, um, what was it, America the Beautiful? <laughs> Girl, girl, the National Guard is outside waiting to, to bring you to jail. <laughs> that, was a, that was a crime. And that's all I got to say on that. You are just getting a little tickle out of that. 
I'm just saying I had so much to say about J-Lo. I couldn't get into it on the top of side eye because, oh yeah, let me just plug that right quick. We did an inauguration as well. Go to my channel and check oh out. Oh my God. I was like, okay, wait. I did this show for politics. I'm gonna save this for Pop Rose. So I gave y'all my extended review of that performance. But you have anything else to say before I get to Gaga? Oh my God. That was like a year's worth of me going in on Janet. <laughs> well, this was deserved. <laughs> At least was so was Janet. So you have anything else to say or we can move on to Gaga? Um, oh God. Now I'm <laughs> is Gaga with somebody right now? Because to me, she looked pregnant. And I think that's why she was so off key because she, you know, them babies be swinging off your vocal cords. So I get it. But I wish Gaga had come out with a pre-recorded track. She made me think, where is Beyonce? Why is Beyonce not here? Like, Shell, call your girl. Now we know Beyonce, if she can do anything other than steal from A. Marie, she can sing the national anthem like nobody's business. I, like just, I, we could have done her pre-recorded track and I would have been fine. Fine. I'm gonna let you finish like Kanye. <laughs> uh, you have any more words to say? Cause we have very different opinion on this. You thought she was good? So first let me get to the fashion. So first when she came out, I just smiled. Cause I was just like, only Gaga. Like she had to bring the dramatics and I appreciated that. She did it in a way only she could. Like I love what she was wearing. It was like a voluminous like ball gown. I didn't really like that it was red, but I was like, okay, I'll forgive it. And then that huge Hunger Games brooch. Like it was just so dramatic and so gaga. And she just, she just came out like, like just like, it was just so dramatic. So then when she opened her mouth, like she did a great job to me, like vocally, everything. Wait, give me a second. She did a great job vocally and she brought camp and drama to the national anthem. She's, she put a spin on it that was just like, it was almost comical to me, but I still appreciated it because she just had a flair to it. And I just really appreciated that. And she hit those notes to me. And I think, I love the transition. Like she's an actual artist and we've seen it through her career and I appreciated that. And finally, like after she finished, she was just, she was so proud of herself. Look, it looked like she just received the second Oscar. It was just hilarious to me in a good way. I, I enjoyed it. I really did. If you go back and look at it, she didn't, she didn't fuck up on any, on any notes. So Maybe we saw two different performances or maybe you just really overly critical or you was just distracted by her hair because the hair was another thing. I mean, I'm not sure if I could defend that, but I loved her outfit. I love what she did with the anthem. She didn't like Christina Aguilera. Like I thought she brought it like her own flair to it. Kind of like how Whitney did, how B did, how I'm about to say Bob Marley, how, um, how Marvin Gaye brought to it. Like, like that, like she put on spin to it. I feel like it was more of a Fergie rendition. No, because Fergie's notes would have been like in cursive all over the place. I remember hearing Lady Gaga perform at the Oscars when she did a little um, Sound of Music medley. Mm -hmm. now, that to me was her best vocal performance. But this, I don't know, like she had clearly been locked out of her house and car because she did not have the right key. Wow, I, I just disagree. Okay. <laughs> Anything else we took away from the inauguration? I will say that um, the poet, Amanda, I'm really glad Joe Biden didn't go after her. That's all because she, I was really touched by her words. Like Joe Biden, I was like, okay, okay, okay. I, I get it, you trying to for the unity, you looking for the soul of America, whatever. But when she went after him, she stole the show. She looks so beautiful. That yellow, oh my God, black people look so good in yellow. But I thought she looked really great and the poem that she delivered was fantastic. So I guess we're done with the inauguration talk. In television news, have you seen 
Bridgerton. I saw the first episode and I was, I saw your review. I wanted to see like, what did you think of it? Now, I was just like, okay, it was all right. I'm not sure if I'm going to be in for the long haul, but I'll give it two more episodes. My friend told me he watched it twice. It was so good. But a couple things, you know, the whole, like, when the queen, when I saw the queen was black as well, I was just like, oh, okay, we're doing this. Like, you know, we're ignoring history. I love it. It's, it's going to be Cinderella. Got it. But the thing is, like, the guy, the lead guy, sexy, it was just, it was just so predictable. Like, I can't even like swoon over him because I'm just like, okay, Tyler Perry and Shonda Rhimes, they have the same leading actor aesthetic. So I just wish he wasn't so like racially ambiguous. Just give us a black man, you know? Like just, it's just a different aesthetic. It's just always the same, always with Shonda. <laughs> Cause she did it with, I think his name was, uh, on Grey's Anatomy, Jesse's character. I, I don't know Jesse's oh, character. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I get you now. It's a pattern. And then you had the guy from How to Get Away with Murder, I want to say Rome Flynn. Like, it was just these, like, it was just predictable, that's all. But story-wise, I was like, okay, I'm not really a period person, but I'm going to give it a second. But what did you think of it? I thought the white people were ugly. I really was expecting attractive white men and there weren't any. And I was just like, these English faces. It was just, I mean, the women weren't cute. The, he's the only attractive one on the show, quiet as it's kept, the dude. Everybody else to me just looked real average. Real. I thought the older brother was cute. Really? Mm. And I don't even like white dudes like that. I was just like, oh, he, he look okay. I'm sorry, Where, give me Ryan, give me a Ryan Murphy cast. That's something to look at. Mm, remember, I, wait, I, hold on I, now, remember 1984, Gus Kenworthy. Give me a Gus okay. Kenworthy. Okay, I'll give him that, but I'm talking about what he did with the American Horror Story Hotel. Like he'll get these same five actors that look the same, these Broadway twinks. <laughs> they all look the same. It, was, it looked like they came right off an assembly line. But you thought, are you intrigued to like finish? I'm gonna watch it because I get paid to. It's not must-see TV for me. A show like WandaVision, that's must-see TV. Or on Netflix, Bling Empire, that's must-see TV. I was gonna say Bling Empire on Netflix has my full attention, my full attention. I I'm so I saw you tweeting about it and I was just like, let me go on and check this out. And a couple people said, you need to watch Bling Empire. Wow, it is good, it's light, and they are rich, 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 rich. I'm mean, rich. Like housewives, child, please, Erica Jane, with all the money your husband stole, you still ain't that rich. Yeah, I said when I saw this, I was like, now that's real money. Like they make the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills look like welfarians, peasants, the impoverished. It just looked like a cast of charades. I'm not gonna say all of Atlanta, but they make them look like a cast of charades in Beverly Hills. One of them shut down Rodeo Drive for a party. <laughs> cast of charades. I think Anna is the grand dame. Like she's the real grand dame. And Christine, she wants to be, but she's trying to compete. But I like them both, and I love the energy. I know Christine is trying a little bit harder, like a Jen Shaw tease, but she's still bringing it to me. And I love the fashions. We have this girl who's a trust fund baby, and all she does is just come and see. She don't even say anything. Her name is Jamie. She'll come in with this, like, I'm not sure if you saw the pink outfit that she wore yet. You're going to gag when you see it. But that's the girl who has the $19,000 a month apartment. And then we have Kevin, who is like the sexy one. And I was just like, wow. I, I got tweeted this. I was just like, they let Kevin be in their circle solely based off his looks. Solely. Like, that's his currency in the group. Because you know Kane, I'm about to say Kane. Kane wants to fuck him. Anna wants to fuck him. You'll see in episode one and, well, episode two and three if you get to it. I believe he is the gigolo. 
And like, I'm sorry, he ain't hanging out with Kane and in that circle, like he he's the little pass around. Now, I don't know if they're ever gonna talk about it and he acts like he wants to be with Kelly and he's looking for another sugar mama, but uh, yeah, he is the pass around. But, like, I'm sorry, you're not buying underwear, $500 underwear for somebody like that. And you're like, oh yeah, let me see, try it. First, with the relationship with him and Kane, like they only knew each other for a year. Like he just moved out there. I think he like auditioned for the show. I heard he's like a successful model, but he's still not on that level. Like he he may have like a great modeling career. You know, you get you get a couple thousand dollars here, but he said he paid a thousand dollars for his apartment. I think he said he had roommates too. And Jamie was like, a a thousand dollars? That that's a shoot. <laughs> like one she said it with such concern like she's like that's a shoe <laughs> also the way that Anna was buying him gifts I think Anna is just like a giving person because I had this conversation last night with the friend it was like I don't really think Anna wants to fuck him but she just loves being generous because she's one of those that have so much money I think she's worth 700 million she's worth 700 million by herself also I tweeted about Kevin saying like all he has is his looks to circulate in that group and Kane tweeted me. <laughs> I was like, who is this? And then I just saw like, oh, that's Kane. He was just like, Ooh. What, did he, what did he say? He was like, how dare you? And he tagged Kevin in his post. Ooh. I was like, Ooh, messy boots. I just said it was all love. I said, you know, it, I was like, no shade. And I'm enjoying the show. I think he's a great guy. That's why I, re I replied to him. Well, wait till they see what I have to say about them. <laughs> they be looking up the hashtags. Like they are so happy that this show is doing well. It's like top, it's top five on Netflix right now. You don't really see like Asians in media like that. And I think it's like refreshing. I think we need to see more of it. And Crazy Rich Asians was a good movie too. So it was like a reality show version. So I implore all of you to check it out. It's really good. It's only eight episodes, too. And it's light TV, too. It's not nothing serious or nothing. I agree. It's light, and it's just what we need right now. It's like, it gives a circle T, almost. Like, that type of just lighthearted fun. So we have two celebrities that were pardoned by uh, 45, but Tiger King has something to say about it. He is mad. He is so mad. He was just like, oh, it's because I'm gay he didn't pardon me. That's what he said. I'm sorry, you begged his pardon and don't have anything to show for it, much like the rest of your life. Joe Exotica can be mad and incarcerated all he wants. You made poor choices and now you gotta live with them. He deserves to be in jail. Like he put a hit out on somebody. Like, let's remember what, what you did, you know? Like Lil Wayne, okay, he is an idiot. Like he, he has like, gun possession charges. Okay, whatever. What rapper has it? Kodak Black, I was a little annoyed by that because he's like a literally, he literally an ogre. Like how he treats women and everything. I didn't like that. But Joe Exotica, stay your ass where you is. Like you put a hit out on Carol Baskin. Like, come on. Well, like, then you know what she did to her husband. You know, she should be right there with him. But she's just Phaedra smart and she know how to keep her hands clean. Don't get mad because you're Apollo and your dumb ass landed in the slammer. That's all. BET is working on a non-scripted show about forming a superstar girl group. Didn't we do this with Kelly Rowland's group and those poor girls are still like just singing for scraps? June's Diary. Like we did this, like you got me excited. Cause I was like, oh, okay, a reality show, like bring back like a College Hill or some shit like that. Like some type of good black reality show. I mean, Bravo has, you know, the housewives and stuff like that. Why can't BET have something like that? Because Atlanta is oversaturated and Houston gets too crunk. You're right. I just want like a Lux show from BET, but I might be asking for too much. I think you are. Because I would say this, we didn't get the luck show from the Asians until they said, okay, no, we, we gonna be in control of this. So I think the black people with money, when they decide to produce their own reality show, then they'll do it. But um, 
it's, it's going to be, you know, the Nini's and the Lisa Woo's and the, and the Lisa Nicole Clouds or whatever her name is. I, I don't know why she's all Nicole. about that. Name. Wait, why are you Lisa Nicole Cloud when you're married to Darren Noggles? I figured you'd be Lisa Noggles, but I don't know. I guess you won't take a sissy's name. Also, I got to say, just kudos last week on that Al Reynolds read. That was, like, severe. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I said something that funny this episode. That was my Phaedra. Now, check that moment. So, I don't know what it is, but Tiana Taylor is in high demand right now for her acting. Lil' Kim just said that she would love Tiana Taylor to play her in a biopic and there's nobody else in the industry that could do it. So Dionne Warwick, I can see it. We know from the, um, the Biggie documentary that Lil' Kim was so angry that Notori played her, so angry. Like she don't even speak to this woman. That's how angry she was. And I gotta say like, yeah, I, I didn't think Notori was a good choice. I, I wouldn't go that far to like blame the actress. So wait, so Tiana's going to be playing Dionne Warwick? No, 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 no. I'm just saying like how Dionne Dion Warwick says she don't want anyone else to play her, but Tiana Taylor. And then Lil' Kim just said the same thing. I don't want nobody else to play me. She's the only one that can do it. I'm just like, Tiana Taylor, the actress, you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought she I thought she rapped or sing or whatever. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Well, um, I could see her as both. I actually could see her as both because she's got that Dion eye. And oh, then she's got that little Kim like rap, you know, but before the botched face. So yeah, I could see both of those. I would love to see that. Okay. I mean, I could see Dionne Warwick, but I just was like, uh, maybe if I squint through the whole thing. And she's not making music anymore, so I'm here for the acting. I am too. Fat Joe and DJ Khaled are launching a joint OnlyFans. And I'm like, what kind of light-skinned bear mess are you going to be getting into? Don't nobody want to see that. So it's not sex-oriented, but... It's like they got to knew what that that would have looked like, you know, like they knew what they were doing. They want the press, whether it was going to be good or bad. We know we're not going to see them bumping buses or whatever, or whatever you call it. Oh, my God. I just got that image in my brain. Oh. Folsom Street T. Oh, I don't even want to. Oh, I already. Who was the other guy that's with him? Fat Joe and who else? DJ Khaled. Oh, Lord. Yeah. They, they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. But to be fair, not everyone, like, uses OnlyFans for nudity or sex-related content. They use it for exclusive content. But I'm like, why can't you just do a Patreon then? Right. I, I don't get why the OnlyFans, but I'm guessing because the name itself now. I was like, oh, so now y'all gonna be the big bone sissies, okay. Huh. Azalea Banks is in foreclosure in Get News. According to Realtor.com, Azalea's home went into foreclosure and was just sold in a bankruptcy sale for $845,000 in November. This is her Los Angeles home, and I can't believe she was able to get a home there. Look, I checked out of Azalea Banks because of a certain story, so I'm just like, Nope. She's in, she might as well just be invisible. I am done with her. So last story, Wendy Williams, um, she's being very forthright right now with her business. I'm guessing because of the movie that's coming out, but now she's actually talking about the baby. Like, cause I, I thought that was just like off limits. Like she will not talk about it, but apparently Kevin did have a child out of wedlock. And she said that she might have forgiven her ex for cheating, but she says she is not interested in meeting the child he had with his mistress. Well, uh, so Kevin ain't never gonna meet his little brother. I'm not even sure whether it was a boy or a girl that um, the mistress had. I mean, Wendy, like, you don't have to look at the baby. You can look at your ankles and see the results of what happened to your marriage and your drug use. 
So if you don't want to face reality, you haven't for the past 20 years. So why should you start now? I say, go ahead. Don't on, don't, don't meet that baby. I wouldn't trust you around the baby anyway. At least she forgave him. So that, that's one thing. How not- are you, you, you can't forgive someone for participating in the open marriage you orchestrated. You think, you think she knew about all of it? He lived 15 minutes away in an $800,000 house. She really didn't know. I'm sorry, she may be many things, many things. Tacky, crass, but she ain't stupid. She ain't stupid. Oh, she knew. Mm, well. Remember, Charlemagne brought Shalina from South Carolina with them when they went up to New York. Oh, I guess I didn't know that to you. You didn't know? Oh yeah, that's common knowledge. Mm-hmm. She just has so, like, you can't talk about people like you do and have so many skeletons in your closet. It's crazy how she be in people's business, but she has so much going on in her glass house. Well, at least she got paid to throw her stones. And on that note, I'll see you sooner than a Republican administration. I'll see you sooner than JLo's next vocal performance.